Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sheep Get Sheared podcast, home of people, politics, and popular culture. I'm your host, Austin Creed, and my friends, the reason I'm doing this show later in the day and the reason I'm only doing the audio of this today is because I have been so consumed with this. This is probably one of the biggest, most important days of my life because Biblical Bachelor is released today. Right now, you can find it on Amazon right now by yours truly, Austin Creed. And I've been working on this book for a while, and it's finally coming out. It, I'm finally a published author. And you know, my friends, I didn't get on here to, to gloat. I didn't get on here to, to flex and say how great I am and make you feel bad. No, it's not the point of the show today. The point of the show today is to I want you to celebrate with me. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the history of Halloween and maybe some of the history you didn't know, because most people don't know anything about Halloween. Or you might think you know, or you, but you'll mispronounce all the words and you don't know what the hell you're talking about. So we're going to go into that as well. But my friends, before I move on to Halloween, and I know that, you know, it's today is Halloween, you know, uh, October 31st, 2023. And I was actually in class, and I'll touch on Halloween right now. One of my professors, he loves Halloween, absolutely adores it. He and his kids love it. So what he did was he put together this presentation, and as I was reading his presentation and he was talking about it, not only did he mispronounce half the things he was talking about, I can only assume because he's not Irish or because he didn't actually look it up, he just said, huh, I think this is how this is pronounced, and then said it, but He highlighted something that was very interesting. He highlighted how much the candy industry has grown and also how much the costumes have changed and just how much big business is behind this holiday. And you know what's interesting? I would argue that Halloween has almost become bigger than Christmas, if not on equal footing with it. Most people don't even say Christmas today, by the way. They, they use Xmas as if, ooh, I can't think Christ. Oh, oh, no, they might actually think that I'm a Christian. Uh, well, I can't have that. And my friends, you know, all seriousness, you know, Halloween is an interesting time. And we'll get more into it in a little bit. But first, I want to return to Biblical Bachelor. And the reason why I had it released on today is because Halloween is largely, it was kind of subverted by the Catholics. And the day that follows in November 1st is All Hallows Day, or All Holy Day. And then November 2nd is All Souls Day. In other words, Halloween precedes All Hallows Day. You get it? All Hallows Eve, Halloween. You see how similar those two are? Exactly. That's that's there for a reason. Now, I'm not going to get into, you know, the Catholic Church destroying Celtic folklore and not just Catholic, not just the Celtics, but a lot of different people across the world. We're not going to touch on that right now. Might save that for another show. But the reason I had Biblical Bachelor released today is because I believe it's important for young men to be given a positive perspective. Because if I look out on the Manosphere as a whole, I like a couple of Manosphere creators. Absolutely, I do. However, it seems very pessimistic to me. And as a realist, I could tell the difference between something that's pessimistic and done in anger and something that's done in happiness and done in good spirits. And the reason that I even make that differential analysis is because... You know, anger can really destroy you as a human being. It's a great motivator in the short in the short term, but in the long term, it can really destroy you. And the reason why I had a biblical bachelor release on Halloween of all days is because I wanted to, to provide an alternative to this largely secular holiday that's kind of been hijacked. You know, originally Halloween was called Samhain. Now, if you look up the spelling, it's S-A-M-H-A-I-N, but it's pronounced Samhain. Anyone who says Samhain doesn't know what they're talking about, and they didn't look it up. They, they looked at it, and they thought that's how it's pronounced. No, it's called Samhain. And on Samhain, it didn't fall necessarily on a 31st, because the Roman calendar that we use today wasn't invented at that point. 
So instead, what they had it, it symbolized was the end of spring and summer and into, you know, the fall and winter. They had a life cycle and a death cycle. And during this Samhain holiday, of course, they didn't call it a holiday. It was a festival. But the Samhain festival focused upon respecting the dead and also respecting the end of the harvest season. And they wore, they would wear costumes to scare away this, they would scare away the evil spirits. And you, you see the jack-o'-lantern. The jack-o'-lantern has become so popular when it comes to Halloween. And you can thank all Disney for that as well with their Nightmare Before Christmas story with Jack Skellington being the Pumpkin King. But the only reason we use pumpkins here is because in the old country, they use turnips. Now, I know if you're not European, more specifically Irish or um, Scottish or English, you don't really care about this. I, I get that. I understand that. Maybe you can learn something a little new today that you didn't know and you can brag to your friends and you can say you didn't get it from TikTok because every time I ask someone, oh, that's cool. Where'd you hear that from? They say TikTok. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I might put this on TikTok. Anyways, my friends, I, get, I don't want to get off the subject too much, but the reason why I wanted to put Biblical Bachelors released today is because Biblical Bachelors for the spiritually seeking young man. In other words, you don't have to be a Christian to like this book. You don't have to. In fact, I guarantee you, most people who read it will not be Christians. But the reason I put biblical in there is to add that spiritual element to immediately get you thinking about, wait a minute, is this Christian? Is this not Christian? Is it? I find it very interesting. On the cover itself, I have the yin yang symbol and I have the cross on there as well. But the main symbol is the yin yang symbol because I find it very fascinating that people are so pigeonholed into their vision of how they view the world and not this isn't just christians this is everybody people like to see the world in very black and white terms like to see things as this is right and this is wrong and most people don't even know why and i understand a lot of christians don't like halloween and i, I sympathize with that truly i do the interesting thing about why I had Biblical Bachelor released today and why I'm so excited about it is because I'm a younger guy myself. And when I look out, and I've made some really heinous mistakes. I've touched on it before in the various shows I've done. But when you, when you really get behind why I wrote this, the reason I wrote the book is because... You know, young men, especially men in general, but more specifically younger guys, we are spit on. Men in general are spit on in society today. For the longest time in human history, men were respected, they were veered, they were acknowledged for their achievements. But today, with the rise of feminism, extreme radical feminism, men are almost seen as if we don't need you. You're not important. You should just you should just sit in the corner and shut up. And then we have the rise of guys like Andrew Tate, guys like guy um Dan Bilzerian, guys like Jordan Peterson. And these things don't happen in a vacuum, my friends. These things don't happen in a vacuum. Men, especially young men, we want leadership. We want someone to look up to. We want someone to help teach us about the world. And those of us who don't have that, we have to learn from our own hard, heinous experiences in our own life. And I, you know, I love my father to death. He's one of the, he's probably the man I respect the most in my entire, you know, world. In the, in the entire world, I respect him the most. However, you can't prepare everyone for everything. And there are certain things I had to learn the hard way. And I learned it at a very young age. You don't truly appreciate your life until you've looked into the eyes of death. Until you've looked death in the eyes and you've had to decide whether to succumb to death or to fight for life. Most people take life for granted. And I don't take life for granted. I did once. I don't know. That's why I live every day to the fullest and I create something every day. I build something every day. I do not go a day without writing a little bit, without doing this show, without doing something 
to build upon the world and give more than I take. Because there are so many parasites out there. And we as men, we're builders, we're movers, we're shapers. Why do you think it is that young boys, you know, play with Legos and cars and stuff like that? And, and girls play with Barbie dolls and American Girl dolls and all this stuff. This is not an accident. But because society is so afraid of what we young guys are capable of, what men in general are capable of, they shame us, they castigate us, they label us, and they throw us aside unless we're, they, and they take us back off the shelf if we're useful, if we push the agenda. And it is my, my desire for you to realize what pitfalls could befall you if you are not careful. And that is why I wrote this book. And you can find it. It's on Amazon. Biblical Bachelor by yours truly. Austin Creed. Paperback. Hardcover. Ebook. Whichever platform you like best. And I'm actually coming out with. I'm in the works of creating an audiobook for it. Right as we speak. I have it. It's on the books. It's getting done. It should come out. I don't know exactly when. But I'll keep you all in the loop. But my friends. I don't do this to make a bunch of money. If I wanted to make a bunch of money, I'd go on Wall Street, uh, I'd be, I'd go and do something that was guaranteed to make me a lot of money. Do I like money? Sure. Of course I like money. Who doesn't? But if I wanted to write, if I wanted to just make a lot of money, I'd write a book about how great feminism is and how men are evil and horrible and women should run the world. You know how many copies I would make? Writing a book like that, apologizing for being a man, apologizing for being a white man at that, apologize for being a Christian, apologize for being heterosexual, apologize that I voted for Trump. Can you imagine how many books I would sell writing a book like that? Because that's exactly what people want to hear. Instead, I wrote a book about how young men need to fight, they need to develop their own personal philosophy, they need to think for themselves, and they need to make sure they get leverage and options and they can win in this life that's set up against them so what do you think do you think i do you think i made it just to make money now hmm? if i wanted to make a lot of money i would have done what i'd said at the beginning i would have just made a book about how apologizing for being a white man who's straight and who voted for trump and happens to be christian that's what i would have done if i wanted to make money you know how many people would have had me on their shows how many people would have said that i was so brave when in fact the exact opposite is true. We live in a world that's so subverted, by the way. So subverted and so out of pocket with everything that comes down the, the sewer pipe that comes out of Hollywood, comes out of the, the capital, that comes out of the filth and garbage of Instagram and all these places. The degeneracy is pushed nonstop by the propagandists in the media, by the lowlifes on television, by the sluts on Instagram. And the reason why I put Biblical Bachelor in the works is because I want young men to take back the reins of control over their life, not just physically. Of course, the gym is important, but I want you to guard yourself spiritually against the evil that comes out there in the form of, of feminism, and they're trying to seduce you into, into becoming a weak man. Weak men, historically, don't last very long, but now they're rewarded because they're good servants to the New World Order. They're good servants to the nanny goat. They're good servants to the movers and shapers in high places to have all the money. And my friends, you want to talk about spooky, scary skeletons and spooky, scary stuff. Talk about the people in power and how they manipulate everything that you see, everything that you read, everything that you hear. Not me, though. <laughs> not me, man. Actually, no, that's partially not true. I would go even farther and tell you how I really, really feel, but then I wouldn't be able to go on the show tomorrow. They'd probably throw me off the air or cancel me. So I got to curtail at least a little bit of what I say. Otherwise, I'm liable to... Um, actually get deplatformed but again my friends my passion is here because this is what i care about this is why i do this show i want you to learn from my mistakes and not make the mistakes i've made and lose i don't want you to lose what you have making the mistakes that i've made 
And that's why I, that's even why I titled the show the way that I did. That's why I want you to go out there and buy the book. Not because it'll make me rich, not because it'll make me five bucks, but because it will make your life better and your life will never be the same again. Whether it's your life, your son's life, your boyfriend's life, your husband's life, your cousin's life, I don't care who it is. Their life will always be better for it and will never be the same again. Because you will have to come to terms with, am I the man I want to be? Could I be better? How do I become better? What does better look like? Am I going down the road I want to go down? And you'll get to decide for yourself what it is you want to do, how you're going to get it, why you should want it, and to go out there and get it. That's my goal, and that's what I want for you. I had to learn this the hard way. Biblical Bachelor is a shortcut to having business boom in your life. To avoiding the pitfalls that I have fallen into and had to learn the hard way. And some of the battles I still fight today. And so if you're fighting them, you're not alone. My friends, please enjoy the evening. If you're going to go trick-or-treating, if you have kids, if you are a kid, go out there and have a good time. Just remember the significance of this holiday. Remember the fact that there is... I, I, I hesitate to even say this, but there is there is true evil in the world. I know some of you are going to sniggle at that and think it's funny. No, it's not funny. It's not cute. It's very concerning. And I want you to know that Halloween can be very dangerous, and I want you to have safe, careful fun tonight. So please be careful. Please understand where you're going, who you're going with. Don't Don't make bad choices. The Satanists go crazy at this holiday, in case you didn't know it. Oh, yes, they do. So be careful. Anyways, my friends, God bless you on this beautiful day. Please go check out Biblical Bachelor on Amazon. I'm working on getting into more bookstores because I know y'all going to love it. I'm working on getting a book signing done. If y'all want to come, you're more than welcome. I'd love to meet you. My friends, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless America. We're out of here. Have a great Halloween. Have a great time, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.